If you're watching severance right now and you think it's completely unrealistic, you might be wrong. The concept of severance is disturbing even if you know that it's fictional. It's about a group of office workers whose minds are surgically divided between their work and their personal lives. And what's even more disturbing and fascinating is that parts of the show are based on very real neuroscience research. As a former medical scientist and current nerd, I'm gonna take you on a little journey through the science of severance from the interesting little details up into the big juicy question. Is it possible to surgically split your mind in two? Okay, so one of the first first things that we see in the show is the elevator ride. For the uninitiated, the characters ride down the elevator to their office and by the time they walk through the elevator doors, they've completely forgotten about their outside lives. It reminds me of a real life phenomenon called the doorway effect where walking through a door makes you forget something. The scientists suggest that when you walk through a doorway into a new room, your brain does a little refresh. Information from that previous location is less likely to be relevant now, and it's hard for your brain to keep all of that information top of mind. So it just lets some of it go. But the doorway effect is pretty mild. It's not like you could just forget your entire life. For that, you'd need something like the severance procedure, which I'll get to. Right now, let's talk about the reintegration procedure. And during this scene in season two, I noticed lots of interesting little details. First, we have Dr. Rigabi setting up the equipment in a creepy dark room, and she's using an oscilloscope, which is actually a real machine that you can use to monitor brain waves, which are patterns of neural activity. And then it gets weird. Okay, well, it was already weird, but even weirder. She's pouring what looks like salt onto a flat surface, and I think this is something called a Kladney plate. It's an experiment where you get a flat plate and you put salt or some other sort of powder on it, and then you vibrate the plate at certain frequencies to make certain patterns in the salt. And I think that she's going to vibrate the plate based on the frequencies of Mark's brainwaves. Then Dr. Rigabi is measuring five different brainwave frequencies, and it's true that we do have five main types of brainwaves. We have a few slower frequency ones, which are more associated with sleep and internal focus and relaxation. And then we have some faster ones that are more about intense concentration and external focus. And then Dr. Rigabi is waving some sort of contraption over Mark's head, and I think it's a magnet. So you might not know this, but if you apply a powerful magnetic field to certain areas of the brain from outside of the skull, you can actually influence the brain activity. And in fact, transcranial magnetic stimulation is a treatment for depression and other psychiatric illnesses. And possibly the magnet's also doing something to the lumen chip. And finally, we see the brain waves of Mark's Innie and Audi coming together on the oscilloscope. And we can also see it on the Kladney plate. So when we have waves that are out of sync, they sort of cancel each other out and we don't see any patterns emerge. But then once they're in sync, we can see those patterns. Suppose Supposedly, this process is combining the memories of Mark's Innie and Audi. But that brings us to the main question, which is, can you surgically separate someone's memories in the first place? There is a real procedure, which is very drastic and very uncommon, called split brain surgery. And during the procedure, the surgeon snips the corpus callosum, which is a bundle of nerve fibers that connect the two hemispheres of the brain together. And essentially, this procedure stops communication between the two hemispheres of the brain, which is normally not something that you'd want to do, but it's a last resort option for people with really severe epilepsy because it helps with their symptoms. But in the small number of people who have undergone this procedure, scientists have noticed something very unusual. The two sides of their brain can process information independently. And it seems like sometimes the two sides of the brain are in conflict with one another. For example, there was a woman who underwent the procedure and then afterwards she'd be at the grocery store reaching for an item on the shelf with one hand and then the other hand would come out and fight it. And this is possible because one side of the brain controls the opposite side of the body and those two sides can be in opposition to each other potentially. And there's another example which is absolutely insane of a young man who after the procedure was asked about his career aspirations and he answered verbally I'd like an office job making technical drawings and that was his left hemisphere of the brain controlling that because the left hemisphere is really responsible for speech but interestingly after he said that he then rearranged Scrabble letters to spell out automobile racer. So this raises a very strange possibility. Does this mean that split brain surgery creates two distinct minds within one body. We think not really. So going back to that woman in the supermarket that I mentioned earlier, when her hands were fighting each other and she couldn't get anything from the shelf, she remembered that whole process and felt present during that whole episode. It's not like when she reached a certain point of the grocery store, one part of her mind went dark and then the other one took over, like in severance. It's not like the consciousness is split in two. The severance procedure isn't possible, at least not right now, 
human consciousness and memory is so complex and there's no simple cut we can do or implant we can put in to split these things in two. But the cool thing about shows like Severance is that they allow us to wonder what life would be like if these technologies were around. And if you know any other cool sci-fi shows or movies or books that you want me to review scientifically, let me know and don't forget to subscribe.